In our last adaptive clearing video, we introduced you to constant engagement roughing. Today, we'd like to highlight some improvements. We're going to start by loading a part into the machine and watching both ways adaptive clearing in action. Here, we can clearly see an adaptive toolpath producing both Klein and conventional cuts. Now, while you likely wouldn't use both ways in hard materials, it does provide significant advantages for large parts in soft materials by reducing the need for long repositioning moves. With fewer repositioning moves, we're constantly improving the efficiency of adaptive clearing, helping you deliver more quality parts in less time. Of course, the truth is you wouldn't use the same cutting parameters in both directions. So let's load up our spike sensory tool holder and find the optimal settings. In this first cut, we'll use the same engagement for both climb and conventional cuts. Notice the change in load. For the next cut, we'll navigate to the Passes tab and adjust the optimal load for the conventional cut to be 15% less. We can accept the changes, run a quick simulation, and load the program into the control. As we run the toolpath, we can see the 15% reduction resulted in evening out the tool load. Before we move on, one quick cautionary note. As we start pushing the limits of these powerful tools, we do need to understand the forces involved. We most often think of simply breaking a tool, and that's probably the safest thing that could go wrong. Another thing we've experienced while pushing the limits is the part pulling from the work holding. This can cause damage to the machine, or worse, injure the operator. Shaft and holder avoidance allows us to produce collision-free roughing strategies that are fully aware of the in-process stock. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this look at the recent updates to adaptive clearing. 